Why are the economies of Eastern Europe in such rough shape? Why are public attitudes toward ethnic minorities and LGBT people so intolerant in Eastern Europe? Why are nationalism and cultural chauvinism so prominent in the Eastern portion of Europe? The answers to these questions are multifaceted and complicated. There is a stark contrast between the economically advanced liberal democracies of Western Europe and the poorer, more illiberal countries of the East. The nation-states of Europe all evolved under different circumstances, creating the patchwork of states we know today. Although the EU binds most of these states together economically and to some extent politically, they all have their own policy objectives. How did Western and Eastern Europe evolve politically and economically? First off, it should be mentioned that Eastern Europe was not always poorer and less developed than the West. For example, Kievan Rus, the ancestor of the modern-day nations of Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, grew rich from trade due to its unique position at the crossroads between Europe and Asia. Up until the latter part of the Middle Ages, Eastern and Western Europe were relatively similar in terms of economic development. However, Western Europe possessed several advantages compared to the East. First, the countries of Western Europe had easier access to the sea compared to the nations of Eastern Europe. Second, Eastern Europe's geographical position works as a double-edged sword. Eastern Europe was better able to establish trade relations with the Middle East and Greater Asia, however, this would also facilitate the invasions of the Mongols and the Ottoman Turks. A study published in February 2022 mentioned that Central and Eastern Europe actually experienced agricultural growth and very limited depopulation during the outbreak of the Black Death in the 1300s. Poland, in particular, escaped relatively unscathed. However, the depopulation of Western Europe led to a labor shortage which empowered the lower classes rather than the ruling elite. Central and Eastern Europe did not experience such a profound labor shortage. The 20th century saw some of the worst destruction in European history. In his 2005 book Postwar, A History of Europe Since 1945, author Tony Jutt wrote, Taking all deaths, civilian and military alike, into account, Poland, Yugoslavia, the USSR, and Greece were the worst affected. One in five Poles had been killed during the Second World War. One in eight Yugoslavs perished during the war. The USSR lost one in 11 people. To put those figures into perspective, only 1 in 77 French lost their lives. 1 in 125 British perished during the war. 80% of the Belarusian capital of Minsk was destroyed by the end of the conflict. 70,000 villages and 1,700 towns in the Soviet Union were destroyed during the course of the Second World War. In Yugoslavia, 50% of the country's livestock and 60% of Yugoslavia's roads were lost. The sheer devastation of the Second World War set the eastern portion of Europe further back developmentally. How do Eastern Europeans view the political and social issues in their respective countries? The way society views those within it and those outside of it has far-reaching political repercussions. A study published by the Pew Research Center in 2018 revealed that people in Central and Eastern Europe are less accepting of Muslims and Jews, same-sex marriage, and legal abortion. 80% of Swedes 88% of Dutch and 74% of Spaniards stated that they were willing to accept Muslims as family members. In contrast, only 12% of Czechs, 21% of Hungarians, and 25% of Ukrainians answered the same. 40% of Russians, 41% of Belarusians, and 43% of Ukrainians were willing to accept Jews as family members, compared to 89% of Belgians, 92% of Danes, and 95% of Norwegians. 64% of Poles viewed religion as an important component of national identity along with 66% of Bulgarians and 78% of Serbians, contrasted with 22% of Dutch, 19% of Belgians, and 15% of Swedes. 69% of Russians view their culture as superior to other the only country west of Poland with a majority was Norway at 58%. Only 5% of Russians favor same-sex marriage, 9% of Ukrainians, and 13% of Bosnians gave similar answers. The majority of people in every Western European country surveyed favored same-sex marriage. There is even a regional divide among Europeans regarding abortion. 54% of Belarusians believe that abortion should be illegal in all or most cases. 56% of Russians, 52% of Poles, and 79% of Moldovans share this sentiment. What is even more alarming is that a majority of young adults, meaning those between the ages of 18 to 34, in Russia, Moldova, Hungary, and Serbia, just to name a few countries, 
are opposed to same-sex marriage. 39% of Belarusian young adults would accept a Jew into their family. A similar percentage of Russians and Moldovans share this sentiment. The extreme social conservatism and militant nationalism within Eastern and Central European countries are creating friction within the EU as well. In December 2022, the European Union withheld $22 billion in cohesion funds allotted to Hungary due to human rights concerns. More specifically, Hungary has been accused of restricting the rights of LGBTQ people, threatening academic freedom, and more. Poland has likewise been in hot water with the EU. In 2022, the European Parliament began looking into the legality of Poland's de facto abortion ban. Russia and Belarus are notorious for their harsh treatment of LGBT people too. Serbia has still not ascended to EU member status as of 2023. One major point of contention between the EU and Serbia is the latter's relationship with Russia. Belgrade has still not imposed sanctions on Moscow. Russia and Belarus have participated in military exercises with Serbia and have provided Serbia with military aid too. Even within the European Union, an entity designed to unite Europe, there is division. The economic disruptions in Europe caused by the war in Ukraine have created yet another sticking point in intra-EU relations. What do you guys think? What will relations between the member states of the EU look like in the next five years? How will Central and Eastern Europe balance their relations with the EU and with Russia? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.